Today, we've got ourselves another yeast shootout. This one's between the Lalamond Saison Style Ale Yeast and the Safe Ale US 05 Yeast. Let's get started. Now, if you know much about brewing, you know that these two yeasts right here are not necessarily made for wine or mead specifically, but they are made for beer most commonly because they're air, ale yeast. And um, I still think it'd be interesting to test this. So I paired two ale yeast against each other rather than two mead yeasts. Let me tell you some um, specifics about these. So the Saison yeast right here, this thing gets up to 15%. It is a quick starter, vigorous fermenter, uh, has a high attenuation. Um, I don't know about the flocculation on this one. The temperature range of it is 59 to 95 um, degrees. Now the other one, the American Ale Safe Ale US 05 is a, has an ABV, ABV cap of 9 to 11%, so much lower than the Saison. Its temperature range is uh, 53 to 77, but what I found is that they're two different listed things. On the packet, it says 53 to 77. Online, they say 64 to 74. So we'll see, I mean, that's still in the range I'm gonna ferment. And it's a medium flock, flocculator, flocculation, whatever. Um, both of these will be really interesting. If you've never seen a yeast shootout, the rules are pretty simple. I'm not gonna talk about them here. There's a uh, link to a video down in the description if you wanna know the rules. I have here in front of me two meads that I just mixed together, and you'll probably see a video um, of it right now. So the two, you know, yeast we're gonna shoot out are gonna be facing against each other. We're gonna find out at the end of this who is the better mead. And I mixed together this mead. Uh, its gravity is 1.095 for both of them. We are using orange blossom honey. I used the same honey through all of these tests, like that. Now, uh, simply enough, I'm not gonna provide this thing with any extra nutrients or energizers or anything like that. Instead, uh, this thing is gonna ferment in my house, which is 68 degrees generally, and it will go through the entire fermentation at that temperature. I'm not giving it any help, either one, any nutrient, so that's just kinda how this works. Let me go ahead and pitch my yeast. This one right here is the Safe Ale, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it in really nicely. And now let's add the Saison yeast. Both of, I, I rehydrated both because um, I think it helps them wake up some. So this is the Saison yeast. Perfect. I'm gonna throw some airlocks on this, put my information down. We're gonna let these go through the primary fermentation. Then I'll come back after the primary and we will, um, we will you know, rack it over, talk about which one fermented faster, where they ended, and then of course do some taste testing and decide who the winner of this yeast shootout will be. So let the shootout begin. It's been seven days since we started this shootout and I was gonna go ahead and do a quick gravity reading thinking that these were further along than they are and they're not. Um, the Saison ale yeast is OG of course 1.095. Currently after seven days 1.080. So we are, we are like crawling I am thinking I might have to feed these things because the Safe Ale uh, US 05, 1.095 um, to start, 1.070. Both of them are kind of turtling their way through this, um, this gravity. So I might have to make an exception for my shootout and actually give them some um, yeast nutrient, but I'm gonna let them sit for a few more days. Maybe they just need some time to truly wake up. If there's not a lot of action in the next two or three days, I'll probably pitch in some dap because we're not past the two, two thirds sugar break yet. So I think we'll be safe to do that. So um, I'll be back with that. All right, and we're back with the shootout. It has been quite some time. We started these about 42 days ago. Now, traditionally, meads take three, maybe four weeks at max. Um, I experienced an ice storm here where I live and my power went out for two weeks. So the temperature in my house dropped to like 45 for those two weeks. These stopped fermenting during that, so we lost about two weeks of progress. But they're done now. Let me tell you the breakdown, um, the gravity breakdown of each one. Now, do we, have to fact we do have to factor in the um, 
ice storm, but this is kind of what we have. We both started at 1.095, and I'll just kind of put them on here rather than say them. So um, let's see, this was day seven right here. Then we had day number 10. Then we had day number 17, day number 23, day number 30, and then day number actually 34 sit here. So that's the breakdown you can see right here. That is how fast they fermented. You can tell that the Saison yeast um, actually fermented faster than the safe or Saf Ale. I've been saying it wrong, the Saf Ale. Um, and that's okay. So obviously the Saison yeast was just a faster fermenter, but that's all right. Um, now, before I taste test these, I know that the sap ale is finished later. It's gonna be a little more yeasty. I want to go ahead and rack them over into new containers. I'm gonna let them set for a few more weeks and then we'll do the taste test and decide who the winner of the shootout is. So let me rack them over real fast. Okay, I've racked them over. Of course I have extra because I started with more than a half gallon and that leaves me with this extra stuff I can use. I can just drink if I wanted to, but again, I don't wanna do the taste test thing. I'll probably put them into a separate half gallon to save for a different reason. But these are my two shoot, shoot out <laughs> um, contenders. Let me wait a couple weeks after they've aged some more and then we'll come back and do the true shootout. All right, here we are for the grand finale of this shootout. So we're gonna do a taste test and I'm going to score each one and that will ultimately be how I choose the winner. So let's start off with the taste test. On this side, I have the Saison yeast this side is the Saf Ale, and of course they're both beer-esque yeast. So we had some problems in the fermentation process in that they went really slow and I had to hit it with some nutrients and do some various stuff, which is not uncommon for meads, but um, it was definitely different than using a wine yeast. So let's first start off by, uh, I'm gonna taste each one, and I'll tell you which one I'm tasting, and then I'll give you some notes, come back and do the score sheet. So the first one, this is the Saison. Nose-wise, it actually has kept the honey character pretty prevalent. I get the uh, bright orange blossom, the uh, floral aroma from this one. So this is the Saison. Ooh, interesting. The uh, Sap Ale actually is an even brighter smell. It, it has retained more perceived sweetness on the nose than the Saison. Ooh, okay, let's start by tasting the um, Saison. Interesting. It is dry, <laughs> definitely has some alcohol burn. They're still yeasty. I mean, in reality, we are two and a half months after primary. So, or not after primary, since this has started. So it, it's still a young mead. It's got some heat to it. It doesn't really highlight Mm, what's that, that taste? It has like a, hmm. It has a weird uh, stringency to it. it kind of coats my mouth in, um, in a way I think of like oily, like a little bit of oil-esque-ness. I, I feel it almost like it's, it's weird, but it's almost like it's numbed some of my taste buds. <laughs> this could be a bad sign. Interesting, it's definitely got, still got heat. I've uh, stirred it up a little bit when I moved them, so they're degassing, sort of. Um. It's kind of weird. The, the nose on it is different than, of course, the taste, but the, the floral side is not as nice. I'm not getting a lot of great honey retention with the Saison. Here's the Sap Ale. Ooh, definitely got some degassing. Get some uh, slight carbonation from that. A little bit of water. Now let's try it again. Definitely yeasty. Both of them are yeasty. But the Sap Ale is actually highlighted more of that honey presence that um, the character that the orange blossom has, which is nice. This one also has a weird, a less weird astringency coating of the mouth. I'm gonna go back and forth between them. There, hmm. so this, the Saison feels a little skunky to me, like, the yeast put off some odd fusel or something, metabolized the uh, honey in a different way. 
because it has this more flat feature. It doesn't have a lot of brightness or pronunciation of the honey character like I'd want in a mead generally. The Sapphire, interestingly enough, is still degassing. Has more brightness to it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take and use this score sheet. I'll pop a picture of it on the screen right now. And I am gonna go back and forth and score each one of these meads and decide, based off of the things you see right now, which one is the winner. So, let's first get started with the Saison. I'll be right back after I have my score sheet. And we're back after the scoring. Now, this is my opinion. Please do not take this as backed completely. This is an opinion. The best thing you can do is try this test on your own or test these yeasts and then experience the things I'm experiencing. Um, yeah. So here's where they scored. I will put, uh, let me just run down it real fast. Let's start with the Saison. Saison yeast, I said, uh, and I'll show pictures. Color appearance, eight out of 10, more clear, haze from yeastiness, uh, nose bouquet, nine out of 15, flat, not a lot of honey aroma. Flavor, eight out of 15, it's pretty juicy to me. More mellow, dark esters, not a lot of retained honey character or brightness or sweetness. Um, finish, six out of 10, odd finish, coats mouth with a oily kind of effect, weird astringency totally but, uh, butchered the word astringency. Nailed it. Honey character presence, not very present. Um, honey character is just not preserved. I wasn't getting a lot of the nice floral notes that I expected from the honey. And that's six out of 10. Mouthfeel body, eight out of 10. Um, it has a good mouthfeel. Honestly, in my opinion, it has a better mouthfeel than this one. It's more mellowed out. It has, I feel like, matured more quickly in that regard than this one. In total, 45 out of 70 for the Saison. The Safale US05, six out of 10 for color and appearance, decently clear, slight haze. Uh, it's clearly degassing, I can see it now, and we're, again, two and a half months since it started. Um, nose bouquet, more, more honey retention, bright orange and floral notes. Uh, there is perceived sweetness on the nose. That's 12 out of 15. Flavor, 11 out of 15. Bright citrus notes, warm honey presence, uh, odd-ish taste after. Still yeasty, of course. That is 11 out of 15. Finish, six out of 10. Odd finish, coats mouth, um, kind of in a weird way. Similar, this is six out of 10. Honey character presence, eight out of 10. Good presence. Can get floral notes pat or post fermentation, which is pretty important. A lot of times, yeast can blow off the the important floral notes that you get from honey during the primary fermentation. So that's kind of impressive. It's eight out of ten, and last but not least, mouthfeel body seven out of ten. I said full body. The yeastiness helps with the full body, but it, it doesn't really. Um, provide smoothness. And I think that's the big thing here. This has a sweet, a smoother taste than this does. That is 50 out of 70. So I'll put the scores. Saison scored 45 out of 70. The Safale USO5 scored 50 out of 70. Now, the winner of this shootout is, by a little bit, the Safale. Here's the most important thing. These yeast are not, well, they can be used for meads and wines and those things, but the, they are not scientifically designed to ferment best for honey. Can you still get a good product out of them? Absolutely, and I do believe this product will get better over time. At this current state, two and a half months later, it's okay, it's not great. So the winner, Safale US05 of this shootout. There are a bunch of other shootouts on the channel if you wanna see those. These two bad boys are gonna go and hide away in my brew room for the next while. And I will re revisit this shootout with all of them. Um, and we'll decide based off, you know, different competitions, which one tastes the best. And I'm hoping to finish more of these shootouts so that I can do like a big, a giant shootout of some sort. So, I hope you will check out the other shootouts and the other videos. I hope this has helped you maybe find some interest in these yeast or other yeast um, 
yeast make a huge difference in a mead. These are very different products and that is solely because of the yeast. They went through the same process, they went through the same everything, the yeast were the variable. So, could I have fermented in their optimal, perfect temperature range uh, and you know make this one ferment at whatever, 71 the whole time? Yes, however, I did not wanna do that. As a, a new brewer, if you are, or even just a seasoned brewer, you might not always ferment your stuff exactly at the median temperature. So it's important to know what these are like in just normal um, circumstance. That's the end. Thank you for watching. If you would like to watch the shootouts, I'll put a link down below. This has been real fun. I plan on doing it again, and I hope you will join me then. Have a great day, and It will cheers. not be one man going to move. It will be an entire nation.